Old PS4? Cheap. New SSD? Cheap. Hours of fun? Priceless. Let's upgrade this thing. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and I just found this used PS4, this OG original launch style PS4 on Marketplace. It came in the original box with two controllers and all the cables you need, and it was like ridiculously cheap. So I grabbed it, I figured I'd use it as a, uh, a spare, load it up with some games and put it in one of the spare rooms, and have some fun with it. So... With the price of SSDs being so cheap, I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and take out the old drive and put in the new drive. I hate the sound of spinning discs in these things, so this is going to make it a little bit quieter and hopefully speed it up a little bit too. So taking out the old drive in this and putting a new SSD drive is, is a relatively easy process. There's three main steps. One is you're going to have to back up the data that you have on there, whether it's saved games or applications. And if you don't need to save anything, you can go ahead and skip that step. Second step is going to be to actually take out the drive physically, put in the new SSD physically. And then the third step is going to be restoring the PS4 software onto that new drive and copying your data back over. So all you need to do to get this done is a Phillips head screwdriver. Of course, the new SSD or whatever drive you want. I'm going to be using a 500 gig SSD, which is the same size as the drive that's in there, so I'm not going to be gaining any size, but I will be gaining speed. Now you can do this with, with any size that you want, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, and uh, with the prices right now, it, it makes sense to go ahead and do it. And then besides that, you're going to need a couple USB drives, one to back up all your data, and then one to get the new system software on. I'm going to be using a couple of USB drives just because the, the amount of data that's on this one is very minimal and I won't have to store much. You can use a USB, you know, big USB external, like one terabyte drive if you want, or 500 gigabytes. But I'm just going to be using this. The process will be exactly the same. And then I'll be using another uh, USB disk to get the new software on. It's only about one gigabyte, so you can use a thumb drive for that. So let's go ahead and, and look at the uh, steps to save my data first. All right, to back up your data, you've got a couple choices. One is you can just save all your save files and then assume that you're gonna reload any of the disks that you may have installed in there, any of the games or applications. And the other option is to just go ahead and, and save everything. Now, since I have very little on here, I'm gonna go through the process of saving everything. So we start off with the USB drive. I'm just gonna plug it into one of the front ports. And I'm going to go up to the settings, scroll all the way down to system, scroll down to backup and restore, and then I'm going to select backup and it says right there backup applications and data and system storage to a USB storage device. Now obviously if you had a bunch of stuff on here you'd want to make sure you had a big enough drive to do that. And in my case it's this is a 64 gigabyte drive it's going to be plenty. Now this says it's going to warn you that the trophies stuff does not get copied this way. So if you do have any trophies that you want to save that haven't been synced with the PSN, you want to make sure that you do log into your PlayStation network and do that first. So let's go ahead and back up to the home screen and I'll show you where to do that. Now this particular Xbox is not logged into the PlayStation Network, so it's not going to work the same way. But if you go right over to from the home screen, right over to Trophies, and look in there, you can see which ones have synced up with the with the PSN and which ones haven't. And if you were logged in, you'd be able to hit Start, and you can manually sync them that way. It's not showing on my screen. That's just because I've just got a dummy user in this one. So let's go ahead and go back into the settings. Now that we're sure that we got our trophies saved, let's go back down to system, back down to backup and restore, back up, and this time we can go ahead and say yes. So because this PlayStation has never been connected to PlayStation Network, 
this dummy user here, it's saying that this user can only be restored to this PS4. Now, if I had a PlayStation account in here, then those would be able to be restored on any PlayStation 4, which is fine. This is all I need to do is restore this one back to the same one because we're going to be putting a new drive in it. So let's go ahead and hit, hit yes. And it asked me what I want to back up. So by default, I've got save data, captures, themes, and the settings, and all the applications saved. And you can see that it shows the free disk space on the thumb drive, 60 gigabytes. You do the quick math over here, you can see it's going to be plenty. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. At this point, you can change the name of your drive that you're creating. And it tells you it's going to be about 1.92 gigabytes in this case. And I'm just going to leave that as the default description and hit back up. And now it's going to restart the PS4 and it's going to start backing the data up to that thumb drive. All right, and it rebooted and it's going to estimate the size and the uh, time it's going to take to back up. Don't be alarmed if it has some crazy number here, like 99 hours to start off with. It'll figure it out after it starts copying some stuff. Now this one's going to be pretty quick since it's only less than 2 gigabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run, and I'll be back when it's done. Alright, so it backed everything up, and it wants me to hit OK to go ahead and restart. Alright, so we got the data backed up. Now we're going to go on to step two, but first we have to shut this thing all the way down. So let's go all the way over to power. And instead of going into rest mode, you want to go down to power options and do the full turn off. So let's turn off PS4. It's going to shut it all the way down. That way we can disconnect our power cable without any problems. All right, now that the PS4 is shut all the way down, I've removed all the cables from the back. I took the thumb drive out. And now it's time to open it up. And look how easy it is. You just go ahead and put your palms right on the top here on this left side. Just kind of push down and push that way. Push to the left. And this cover right here just kind of wiggles right off. And now you can get to the drive. And this drive is held in with just one screw. So that's what we need the Phillips head screwdriver for first. So once you remove that one screw, then the drive should just pull forward, and out she comes. Now it's in a drive tray, so we're going to remove this from the tray. It's got four screws, two on each side. So I'm going to take those four screws out, put the new drive in this place, making sure that you remember the orientation of the SATA connector, otherwise it's not going to plug back in. So take the four screws out, put the new drive in, put the four screws in, and then I'll be back in a minute to plug it back in. All right, so the old drive is out, the new drive is in. I put the four screws back in, made sure the connector was facing the right way. And now it's just as easy as sliding this back in. And you don't have to slide too hard. Just fully seat it. You can make sure if you look right here and the hole is lined up, then you know it's kind of pushed in enough. It's not going to go anymore. You're not going to get a, a solid ka-chunk or anything when it plugs in. So let's go ahead and get that last screw back in. And then we can slide the cover back on. Now this, this type of upgrade, the hardware upgrade is much easier than the software upgrade. And the other nice thing about this type of upgrade is there's really no real risk of like messing anything up too bad because your old drive is right here. As long as you don't drop this off your table as you're doing this, you still have your old drive. If something goes wrong in the whole process, you just take that one out, put this back in, and your PlayStation is just like it was before you started. But I don't think we're going to have any problems. So I'm just going to label this as PS4 drive and I'll put it on my shelf and then I know where it came from. All right, the next thing we need to do is get our thumb drive ready for the update file to reinstall the PlayStation software onto the PS4. 
So I've got the web page right here, right at playstation.com, that has the download for the file, and I'll put this link to this section right here in the description below. So you're going to download this file, it's about a one gigabyte, and you're going to grab your second thumb drive, or whatever thumb drive you're going to be using to install this, and in that thumb drive you want to create a folder just called PS4. In that folder you need to create a folder named update, and then in that update file go ahead and drag that file that you just downloaded. So this is the file that I just downloaded. Now I didn't mention before, but the formatting of both of these drives that we're going to hook up to the PlayStation, they need to be either FAT32 or XFAT. Either one will work. So this one is uh, set up as XFAT. So I've dragged that on here. I'm going to eject this disk, and then I'm going to bring it over to the PlayStation to install the new software. All right, so here's the thumb drive that I just created on my Windows computer. And you can do the same thing on a Mac computer. You can just use Disk Utility to format it. And don't be confused between the two thumb drives. I've got this one actually tagged as, as red, even though they're both the same same thumb drive. This The red one is the one that has all my saves on it, and this is the new one I just created. So I've got that plugged in. I've got my controller plugged in, so I don't have to worry about if it forgot what which controller was paired to it. And now we need to boot this up into safe mode. So to do that, I'm going to press this power button and keep it held in until the second beep. There's the first beep. There's the second beep. Now you can let go. And now the PlayStation will be booting into safe mode. Alright, once you're into safe mode, it wants you to connect your uh, controller with a USB cable and press that PlayStation button. And now the only option we have here is initialize the PS4. So as soon as you do that, it's going to look for that thumb drive. It's going to say connect the thumb drive that has whatever version that you just downloaded will be fine. It may be different than what I have here. And as soon as you hit OK on that, it'll start looking for it. And it's going to make sure that you have the right file in that right format. And now it's giving you one last chance to back out. So it's saying it's going to be initialized. All the data is going to be deleted. Of course, we've just put in a brand new drive, so that's fine with us. So let's hit OK. And now it's going to reboot. After it reboots, it's going to go ahead and copy that file over and get the PlayStation ready. So I'll be back when this is done. All right, after it copied all the files over, it did a couple reboots. So at this point, it's powered back up and it's ready just like it was when it was brand new out of the box. So it wants us to push our PlayStation button. And we're going to initialize the PlayStation just like it was brand new. Here we are, brand new with a brand new user. So at this point we can take the system update USB disk out. And we can take the disk that has our backups on it. Plug that into the front USB. And now we're going to go up to settings. Scroll all the way down to system. Scroll down to Backup and Restore, and we're going to restore the PS4. So it found this, in my case, 2 gigabyte file that we had saved on that thumb drive. Yours may be a big USB disk. And it's going to restore everything, and then it's going to reboot.
All right, and after it restored the files, it rebooted one last time. And now we're good to go. We should see if we go into our settings and then scroll down to storage. I should see that I do have that one game file that I had on there. And if I go down to my save data, there's the save file I had for it. So it's exactly how it was when I started. Except now I've got a fast brand new SSD drive in there. And it doesn't get any easier than that. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you saw how easy it was to update or upgrade your drive to an SSD. If you have any questions about any of the process, go ahead and ask it in the question in the comments below. If you did get something out of this, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. If you like this type of content and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And thanks as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.